What's that look for? Hey, kia ora, Helen Brown's here coming to you live from Mesa in Arizona. I apologize for the late hour of my morning session. I mean, the morning's already almost over, but it has been a busy morning so far. I've had training sessions, been out for a walk with Zephy, had a great reconnect with a friend, um, and yes, we did talk a little longer than we probably should have, but um, it was a great, we had a great, great conversation, um, and I hadn't spoken to her for a while, so it was a lot of catch up to do. Um, but I hope you're all having a super fantastic sparkling dark start to tune up Tuesday. Yes, it's that day of the week that we get to make those little tweaks, those little changes that help improve our lives, help improve our business, help improve relationships, all sorts of great fun things. So today we're going to talk about calendar blocking. And um, I sit here and you probably all seen my little basket. Hang on, I'm going to get my basket over here. And um, I know you've all seen my project board from time to time. It doesn't have any projects up there on it right now. But this is my little basket. Try not to make sure everything falls. I've got my colored highlighters. I have my colored pens. And I have my colored post-its. And guess what? They all coordinate. So I have purple pen, a purple ink pen, and a purple highlighter. I have orange pens and orange highlighters. So every color on these pens is the same color ink inside. And then I have matching post-it notes. I like to be color coordinated most of the time. Uh, <laughs> but what do I use that for? Because I still use a paper planner. And in there, I use each color represents a different type of block of time. Is it personal time? Is it working time? Is it time working on a project? Is it a meeting? Um, is it doing my lives? You know, everything goes into my planner. And then I, and I also have to keep a digital calendar as well because I do have um, um, an electronic way for people to make appointments with me where they can see what's in my calendar, what time I have available. They can book it with the best day and time that matches them. So there is that component as well. And the cool part about Google Calendars is that you can actually color code all your appointments. So the color coding and in Google calendars matches with my pens and highlighters and matches with my planner so it doesn't matter what I look at if I see that color I know oh I've got personal time coming up or, oh I've got a high priority task that needs to be done so what is calendar blocking calendar blocking is blocking out times for certain activities and when I talk about calendar blocking and putting stuff in your calendar you put everything in there so that you do excuse me when you have time to do things um, you know what is your you don't have to fill up your schedule completely um, you know, the first thing I put in there is my me time and my fun time, got to have those in there, and family time. So those are the three important things that go in there. Those are sort of like the bookends at each day. You know, when I do my me time in the morning, um, you know, my meditation time, my exercise time, um, walking Zephy, um, having breakfast, um, all of that goes into that me time category along with, um, and then in the evening I will have a fun time scheduled in there as well. So I'm blo blocking the both ends of the day with my before work stuff, my after work stuff. Um, and then I have my business hours. So it's before business and after business. So then I have my business hours. In there, I'm putting things like, you know, you've got your to-do lists. To-do lists are great. I totally get them. I love using to-do lists. But if things are not scheduled in my calendar, they tend not to get done. So when somebody gives me a task to do, because I do a little bit of VA work um, at the moment as well, um, so when they give me a task to do, I always ask, by when do you want that done? Because if they don't give me a date, it tends to get pushed out for those that I do get an end date by. So when they give me an end date, I'm now scheduling that task into my calendar to say, okay, I have to work on this task here because it's, and I'm going to work on this task Monday, Tuesday, even though it's not due till Friday, because I want to have Monday, Tuesday, I'm going to work on it and try and get it done by Wednesday. That way, um, if something happens, I've still got speed. I'm not like saying, oh, it's not due till Friday, so I don't have to start working on it until Thursday, and then you come up with a problem. Now you've got to go back to the person and say, hey, what's the da-da-da? No, if I start at the beginning of the, if I work on it Monday, Tuesday, I have time to come up with those problems. Time to go back to the person and say, hey, you remember you gave me this task to do? We've got a little, came across this hiccup. Um, do you want me to keep working on that task? What is your solution for that task? Or, um, hey, I can work around it this way. Would that work for you? So thing, asking them things like that. And then um, that gives me time to get a response and still get it to them on time. Um, so that's my high priority stuff. What's the stuff that has to be done because of the time sensitivity on it? Then the lower priority stuff, um, which could be working on a campaign, a card campaign for clients, uh, for, 
for my clients where where I'm sending out the cards, not them sending out the cards. So where I'm taking my personal clients and I'm creating a campaign to keep in contact with them, um, that could be a lower priority than um, something that is more time sensitive. Um, and usually when I'm designing the campaigns for my clients, it's we're months out from the date when I actually want to start those campaigns. So it's not like it's I'm pushing the clients to the back burner and ignoring them for now. It's that this project I'm starting to work on now, even though I'm not going to have it up and running, I don't want it up and running till so we're in January, so probably March, April. I'm working on the campaigns I want to start in March and April. I'm working on them now. Um, so I've got plenty of time to get them done. Um, making sure I put my breaks in there. So if I'm um, my calls when I do my zoom calls I like to make them 50 minutes instead of 60 minutes and then putting a 10 minute break in there and um, just time to um, check the phone if I've because I usually have the phone on sound and it's usually screened down so I don't even see if it's ringing because um, I want my full attention to be on the person that I'm talking with unless there's some reason for me to have my phone on phone in my hand while I'm talking to that person it's down face down away from me um, also I put in times at the beginning of the day and the end of the day when I'm going to be solely into um, reactive tasks like checking email and responding to email, um, do it going through my friends lists on social media, looking at those, commenting, liking and all that sort of thing. Um, the other thing that I, but there are times when I'm on a break where I might, where I might go in and check my email because I'm waiting for a response for a client for something that I'm working on for them. So those are the only times that I'm but I'm not responding to other emails that have come in during that time. That's in the email time block. But I make them all different colors. Like green is for my meetings. And then I have light blue. I have a really cool light blue. It's actually the same color as my pen. Um, it's <laughs> so I have green for meetings. I have orange for phone calls or Zoom meetings. Because um, the, the Zoom meetings Zoom meetings and phone calls, are, especially if they're one-on-one, -on -one, um, to me, it's when I'm doing it as a Zoom instead of talking on the phone, it's like a phone call. So that's my orange color. My, um, is there anything I have? No, I don't have red. My pink is my high priority stuff. Um, my green is, is meetings, that's group meetings. So if I've got a mastermind group coming up or I've got an event coming up this weekend, Networking Riches. Um, oh, if you want to come to Networking Riches as my guest for free, let me know. I'm actually going to put the link in the um, description of the video. Um, but Networking Riches is phenomenal. It is, um, we've got two days and we're doing masterminding both days as well. But it's taking you from what do you do before a networking event, during a networking event, after the networking event, mainly online. But we will be talking some in-person stuff because there are some places that are open where they're doing in-person meetings. But most people are meeting online. So how do you effectively network online um, compared to not being online? So there's different tips and te techniques that are going to get going to get given there. I've been told that Casey has new updated information in there, so I'm like, yay! Um, but I always, always, always pick up nuggets. I always get writer's cramp at these things. But my favorite part is for those that are in attendance, we get to talk about your businesses. Um, if you you volunteer, we ask for volunteers. If you've got one problem with your business that you're trying to get over, um, you've got a breakdown and you're not sure how to get through it, you've got a um, You've come to a brick wall in your business. You're not sure where to go. You're starting a new business, but you're not sure how to get the word out there. You're not 100% sure on who your target audience is. So those sorts of things were put to the mastermind chair. And then you get the brilliance of Casey and Bajal and YT. And then you also get the brilliance of the room as well, um, where we all get to chip in and talk. And there's some great discussions that come out of there. And one of the reasons I really like this section is... The main reason is because I love watching the expression on the person's face when they suddenly get it. When they have that light bulb go off, it is such a magical, magical moment when you see that look on the person's face that they get it, that light bulb's gone off, then they're going to hit the ground running. And then the other reason I like this is because um, there's always golden nuggets always golden nuggets to come in because a lot of times people come up with ideas for somebody's business and you go oh I really like that idea and you jot it down and then you're like looking at it after and you go okay the way they described it is not going to work for my business that way but how can I make it work you know it's a really cool idea how can I make it work for my business so you ask yourself those sorts of questions so I'm going to put the link to networking riches in the description of this video it's this coming Saturday and Sunday it's going to be amazing um it's going to be off the charts it always is 
but anyway, so I've got that in there in green. So any meeting, any conferences, training sessions like that are in green. I have light blue for a particular type of client. For my VA clients, they're in light blue. Um, purple is my genealogy, is my genealogy stuff. Um, what colors do I have left? Green and purple, but black very rarely gets used on anything. Blue, 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 what's blue? Blue's family stuff, family and friends. Um, and that's basically it. Purple, pink, green, light blue, dark blue. Then I do have black, oh, black's travel, because the roads are asphalt, so any travel time, it gets written in in black. So that's basically, um, how I time block and what I use and I use and I color code so I can quickly look at my day and go okay you know there's three blocks of green in there all right I've got three meetings on I've got three group meetings on today oh I've got some orange in there it means I've got some one-on-one -on -one meetings in there that day um if I see um the dark blue I know that that's family time me time slash family time if I see light blue in there I know that I'm doing some VA work in the morning or I'm doing VA work in the afternoon if I see the purple in there I'm doing genealogy work during that time so I have that in there I have the breaks in there so um yeah so the, the blue is family time me time and my breaks so they all get it all gets put into there um and then I use no color for when I'm checking emails and social media and that sort of stuff so um, it's very quick very easy to it's whatever the default color is which I think is like lavender is my default color yeah those are the reactive stuff like responding to emails checking voicemail that sort of stuff that's that reactive stuff um so a good part about time blocking is that it helps you be productive you get these people out there that say that they multitask but when you actually look at the productivity there may not be a lot of productivity in there but when you're blocking out time in your calendar you can laser focus in on that thing that you're doing so when i'm doing my va work i have i actually have written like if i have the color block there I'll actually have written in this is what's going to get done during that time and how I work out how much time there is is when I first started and calendar blocking is not something you're going to learn overnight it is a process because you have to work it with how you work um, it's very tailor very customizable um, but the cool part is is that when you first start doing time block and you don't know how long a task takes keep a notebook with the start and end times of each task that you do so that you know that, okay, when I'm checking emails, I need a, I need 30 minutes a day to do that. Or um, I need an hour a day to do that. Or I only need 15 minutes to quickly go through the emails. Um, it could be if, you, um, if you've got your, um, I use Time Trade. There's also Calen Calendly and other appointment things out there. It's going in there and blocking times in there so that you know. Um, actually, on the, the electronic calendar, I actually have a light gray block. And what I do with those light gray blocks is that they are my um, time trade time. So they're the, the sections of each day. So if I'm going to set up doing something at the same time each week on a certain day, is it going to interfere with my calendar time? Do I need to go in and adjust my appointment blocks? So these are times where people can come into my, um, and of course I can set up as free because if my calendar, if um, time trace is anything with busy on it, they're going to take that time slot out. So if I, for example, doing my Facebook lives at 4 p.m. every day, 4 p.m. Pacific every day, um, I have no um, no appointments available on my calendar in the time trade account for 4 p.m. that day because I know that that's, I'm never going to be on a call at that time of the day anyway. So I take that out. I only slot the times in and times when I want to have it on certain days as well. Um, and I have them in light gray, so if I'm going to be looking at doing anything permanently, then I know that um, which time spaces I can avoid, or I'm going to have to tweak. But you're always making changes. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. There's no perfect system. It's just what works for you. But the cool part is, is that I have found with me, with time blocking, calendar blocking, is that I am more productive during that time than if I totally forget to plan my week and don't do my calendar blocking. If I don't do my calendar blocking, I basically waste my time when I'm calendar blocking I'm more on point do I go over on times absolutely but I also have Fridays where I don't schedule anything on Friday I try not to schedule anything on Fridays because that's my overflow day so if there's something I didn't get done during the week I finish it up on Friday um, if I find that um, I've got a task that's going to be 
it's going to take me an extra 15 minutes longer and I don't have 15 minutes in that day to finish it, it may get, it will get scheduled into on Friday to get done then. So this, you can make it as colorful as you want to. I mean, you guys have seen my mirror at times where I've had all the project stuff up on there. That's when I find those little five, 10 minute breaks in here. Oh, okay. My call got canceled. I now have a break. I now have a call got canceled. I now have free time. What can I do? I go to my project board, which I have to put up my new project board and I will go, okay, I've got an hour to fill now. So what can I do? And each one of those little squares up on the board is, um, is no more than 60 minutes, no more than 50 minutes because I have that 10 minute break. Um, so I'll go to the board. Oh, I can knock out these two 20 minute tasks. Yeah. And I get an extra 10 minutes to, you know, um, my break. It could be backing up to a break. So I get an extra 10 minutes on my break. I get an extra 10 minutes on my lunch break. Um, you know, I got an extra 10 minutes so I can go finish that little, I can do small work on that 15 minute task I had to reschedule for Friday. So, um, have a look at how you're, how are you spending your time during your day? It's always interesting to see people go, oh, I'm so busy today. Yes, you may have been busy, but how productive were you during the day? So keep track. And I still keep track of my planner on how productive, did I get that task finished? Yes. How long did it take me? I write it down because I know next time that task comes up, you know, it's a, it's no longer an hour task, it's a 30 minute task, but I still allow an hour for it. So always, if you think it's a 15 minute task, give yourself 30 to 45 minutes to do that 15 minute task. Because there will be emergencies that come up. There are emergencies that come up and you just got to make allowances for those along the way. But, I feel like that was boring. Do you find that useful? Color blocking, calendar blocking. It's a useful task to have. And it's something you've just got to practice at and just keep working at. You will eventually get it. So um, if you'd like to join us for Networking Riches, which is my total side tangent, um, come join us <laughs> at the link that will be um, in the description. I'm going to do that as soon as we finish this live. Um, it is a phenomenal thing. You can come as complimentary as my guest. I would love to have you there. And um, we look forward to having seeing you guys later on today. So have a super fantastic sparkling tune-up Tuesday. Give calendar blocking a go. Tweak it, change it so it works best for you. Some people use one color, color for the whole thing. Some people just go nuts with the colors. It's up to you. If you're not a color person, don't use color, don't use color for every different appointment or types of appointments. For me, I find it easier because it stands out. If I've got purple, I'm doing genealogy. And I don't have to go into the details. It's just a quick glance at the calendar. Do I have something that I can move because I've had something come up that I need to do? Do I have something that I can move? So that's, that helps me too when I can quickly see what colors are there and I know what the colors are for. It helps me see what I can move or I might need to shrink down some time on something to allow time for something else to come up that's an urgent project that's come up. So anyway, that's it for me for now. Have a super fantastic sparkling tune up Tuesday and my days. And we'll catch you guys later today. Hey, Conero. Beep, 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 beep.